New Year, new sermon series. We're done with the Jesus way, although we're not done living it, and we're on to something else. This year, from now until we're done, hopefully, for the year, we are going to look at the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus' biggest, most comprehensive, topic-covering talk in the entire New Testament. And we've talked about different parts of this before, the Lord's Prayer, anxiety, few other things, but we are going to go and look at the whole sermon in different little chunks over the course of the next few months. So I want you guys to dial in and tune in, whether you are at home or whether you're here with us live and in person, and let's ask God to fully affect us and change us and renew us through what we are going to learn from this amazing, amazing teaching of Jesus. So we need to start with some questions. Have you in any way in the midst of the past basically year of this COVID thing as you may have been stuck at home doing homeschooling or maybe you've lost the ability to do certain things like it got you to put off getting your license for a while or you've been stuck at home with your irritating siblings or this or that or the other thing. Have you ever thought in the middle of that that you're blessed? Probably not. Probably just not super happy with the whole thing. What about in your personal life? Do you feel like you're popular? Do you feel like you're accepted and loved for who you are? Do you feel pretty or do you feel ugly? Do you feel cool or do you feel like a loser? Do you feel like you fit in anywhere? Maybe, maybe you don't feel as talented as other people or as good at school. Is that the way you feel? And in the middle of that, do you feel blessed? Do you feel like, yay, things are great? I, I wouldn't. I would struggle with that, to be honest. Now, think about faith and this whole walking with Jesus thing. You guys come to youth and you, your parents teach you things at home and hopefully you're watching on Sundays when we, when we do our Sunday live stream. You know you deep down inside. You know the things that we're teaching. You know that as you hear these things, you think, yeah, I'm not that. And you've got all these private thoughts that you want to keep to yourself so that no one knows you. But you know that God knows you. Do you know that he loves you anyway? And that he wants to bless you? Do you know that you are blessed despite the you that you don't show to anyone? Now, tonight we are going to talk about the Beatitudes. And you'll see where this is going because Beatitudes isn't a normal word. Beatitudes is just a Latin version of the word blessed. So when I ask you, do you feel blessed in the middle of life? That's what we're talking about. And this comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. And I'm just going to read it to start with, because Jesus is always going to say it better than I will. So, let's look at this together. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and he taught them, saying... Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It's a short passage. That's the Beatitudes. And there are nine blessings that Jesus talks about there. But we're not going to go into each of those tonight. That's going to come next week. What we want to talk about tonight is what is this idea of blessing? Now, before we dig into that, we actually have to ask a couple questions. One, we asked already, what is a Beatitude? Blessing. The next we have to ask is, who is Jesus talking to? Because that's going to matter. That's going to matter to us and how we hear this. Well, we actually need to go back again and look at a couple more verses from the previous chapter in Matthew. So this is Matthew chapter 4, and this is going to give us a picture of who Jesus was speaking to. 
And he went through all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction from among the people. So his fame spread throughout all of Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. Who is Jesus speaking to? People having a hard time, sick, demon oppressed, afflicted, people like you and me, because I asked those questions earlier and I'd be willing to bet that more than a few of you feel like in some way you are oppressed or afflicted or life is not great or the way you would desire it to be. It's not right, something's off. That's who Jesus was talking to. So if you feel that way, Jesus is speaking to you and he wants to give a blessing. He wants to be a blessing to you. That's this whole thing. Blessed are those who are struggling. Jesus is bringing a blessing. And what Jesus is doing is bringing himself. Because when you think of all those things that are wrong in the world, all those things that Jesus was doing, healing the sick, the epileptics, the paralytics, coming to the poor in spirit, the meek and the mourning, and those who are persecuted for doing the right thing, the blessing is Jesus. He fulfilled all of these things perfectly. He mourned, he was persecuted for being perfectly righteous. He was the most afflicted, most attacked person in history. And he was merciful and kind and good despite all of that. He was the only person who could be perfect, who was truly blessed. And he came to share himself with those who were in need, those who were struggling, with us. He's the blessing. We're never gonna be blessed outside of Jesus. No matter what the world tells us, we are never gonna be good enough. We're always just gonna have to keep striving and striving and Jesus comes into the middle of that and says, stop, I'm the blessing, I'm here for you. I love you despite how much you're having a hard time. Jesus is that blessing. And he's calling us by teaching us this to have our minds change, the way we think about blessing the way we think about the good life. Check this out, this is from Romans 12. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Be transformed. That was what Jesus was calling for when he taught this blessing. He's saying, you think the wrong way about the world. You think that this is gonna make you happy. You think that this is gonna bring you a blessing. I'm telling you that I'm the blessing. And if you're struggling, what you need to accept is me and my love for you, my perfect, unceasing love for you. And you guys need to hear this. You will never be more or less loved by Jesus than you are right now. No matter the good you do, no matter the bad you do, he loves you perfectly. And you guys know my story. This is my story to this day. I used to be a lot of things. I used to be a drug dealer. I used to be a criminal. And those are really, really bad things. And Jesus came into the middle of that and he loved me and he called me. But guess what? I am still sick and oppressed and demon afflicted and all those other things today. I don't love my wife the way I should. I don't do my job as best as I can. Sometimes I fall asleep on my desk. Guys, Jesus is the blessing to me still. He wants to be that blessing to you too. He's calling you. He's offering himself to you. He offered himself for all of us and all we have to do is accept him. And we are blessed in him. It's different from what the world thinks. It's different from what we think. It's upside down. We call this the upside down kingdom. It's backwards, it's bizarro world. One of my favorite bands of all time, As I Lay Dying, ripping heavy band, screams for days. They wrote this song called Upside Down Kingdom. Big surprise, that's where I got the name. But they say this in the last chorus in the last line. 
This is a kingdom born upside down. This is a kingdom where the broken are crowned. If helplessness is our system, then we're better off upside down. If you can't do it, if you can't get love doing everything in your power, you're better off with Jesus. And that's always gonna be the case. We're always gonna be better off with Jesus. So, in all those questions I asked you guys earlier, are you blessed? Do you think of yourself as blessed? Do you have the beatitude, the good news, the kingdom news of Jesus with you? It's getting you through this and not just a way that's making you get through the next couple months where we're maybe stuck inside some more, but a way that's perfect for your life, that's giving you hope for your life, hope for your future, hope for your eternity. That's what we're talking about. Do you feel blessed? And if you don't, do you want that? Do you want the truly good life? Because Jesus is offering it for free to you. He paid it all. He did it all. He was perfect and he made a way. Do you want it and do you want him? Because he himself is the blessing. If you do want that, I'm asking you guys, respond to him. Respond to him now, tonight. Yes, I want you, Jesus. I know I can't do this on my own, and I need you. I need you. Respond tonight, but don't just stop there. Respond with your whole life. He's gonna get you through. He's gonna be the blessing. He's gonna be that perfect world that is fixed, ultimately, into eternity, because that's what he's about, and that's what he does. But you need to trust and follow him every day, every action, every thought. And when you fail and when you screw up and when you still are sick and afflicted, he's going to be there being that blessing.